and we're going to sing a song about the windows of heaven, and it's the one that Miss Leah and Gary are playing now. Uh, we're going to sing it two times. It's only one verse, so okay, you can handle that. And then at the end of it, you know, and, and that's why I'm happy, and that's why you're happy, and that's why we're happy tonight, okay? So a little, little curveball there. The words aren't there at the end. So it's, and that's why I'm happy, that's why you're happy, and that's why we're happy, all right? All right. So we're going to sing it the first time through just like it is, and then we'll sing it a second time, and we'll add that little pizzazz there. You see if everybody's on their toes tonight. All right, let's sing together. The windows of heaven are open, the blessings are flowing tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garment, he gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven, and that's why I'm happy tonight. The windows of heaven are open, the blessings are falling tonight. There's joy, joy, joy in my heart since Jesus made everything right. I gave him my old tattered garment, he gave me a robe of pure white. I'm feasting on manna from heaven, and that's why I'm happy, and that's why you're happy, and that's why we're happy tonight. You did good. I think you did marvelous. Well, amen. Brother Bill, why don't you lead us to the Lord in prayer tonight? Would you be so kind as to do that for us? Yes, sir. Amen. Thank you. You may be seated. Pastor, did you have any announcements or anything? Um, other than our special one this weekend coming up. All right. So I think the announcements or the upcoming events are on the front of your prayer bulletin if you've got one on your way in. If not, you can snag one on the way out or look on somebody's with you next to you. But uh, Thursday, tomorrow night, uh, 5.30, will be visitation. And if you are planning on coming, please alert Brother Charlie or pastor of your plans. I think uh, I had a pastor on there, but I think it's on the other column underneath that box that's covering it, <laughs> if that makes sense to you. If not, know that it's in there somewhere, okay? Yeah. Everything rises and falls on leadership around here, and pastor's our leader, and I didn't mean to cover up his name. Anyway, um, uh, also, the teen camp car wash is this Saturday at uh, July the 9th at 11 a.m. Um, and then it's again teen car wash Saturday, <laughs> July 9th, with a little colon in it this time added between the L and the Y. Uh, all right, so I, I meant to put the, where it's going to be located, and that's at the Valley Dairy Freeze, and that's where it's in the brackets right there. VBS is there for your dates, the 18th through the 22nd of July, and then also Teen Camp at Victory, at Camp Victory, July 25th through the 29th. We're gonna have several uh, different fundraisers, one being of which is the, uh, the car wash, and then is it this Sunday, Pastor? Yes. So this Sunday is going to be a, a, f a Teen Taco Day, and uh, that's um, the flyers, or the, it was on the bulletins there that Brother Russell had made. It's a menu there. You can see what the options are, so snag one of those on your way out and make your plans for Sunday. It's going to be a delicious morning. So, We're promoting the pastor's special later on. Oh, the pastor's special happens to be the, the, the special price, too, and so that you will be blessed by eating the, the marvelous meal and also blessed by giving the largest donation to the teens and we've never had any teens that have uh, a blessing and a tribute to you folks. Uh, there's never been a teenager that, who's wanted to come had to, that their way has been not been paid for that hadn't been able to be able to pay by them or their family or bus child or 
even some of our church families with 17 zillion kids that we've had before. But uh, and so that's a blessing. And so thank you so much for that. And you might just be thinking about making a donation or sponsoring uh, a child in full or sponsoring a teen in full, excuse me, teens, or sponsoring um, maybe two families put together. Um, or if you'd want to uh, participate in both of those events this weekend, the Saturday's car wash or the, t the taco, the teen taco day on Sunday. The missionary of the week is Joseph and Darcy Flory. There are missionaries to Russia, and that's joe at florytorussia.com. And then if you'd open up your front of your prayer bulletin, uh, it is the first Sunday of the month, so everything that was highlighted was taken off the highlighted list. And then folks that were asked about um, special since then, we added the, the um the highlighted version to them as well. So things have been re-highlighted. You say, well, they've been on there for several weeks. That's because folks keep reminding me and reminding pastor and reminding others that they'd like to be placed on for special prayer. So we have Miss Darlene Wilt Miller. Uh, she was discharged. She wasn't rehab. She was discharged. And then yesterday she was brought back to uh, St. Mary's and Elizabeth, as was my understanding from um, her sister today. Allison Pruitt, number two underneath illness and health concerns. How, can we have an update on her? Great. Well, amen. An answer in prayer for Allison. We can take. All right. So we can take Connie off there, too. Number four underneath other. Probably because at the time that I put her under other, we didn't have any room under illness and health concerns. Um, we have Betty Carter. She has uh, um, had a little incident this week, and she was uh, rushed by Greg to the ER, and they just said that she had uh, AFib and placed her on our heart monitor, and she'll be under that for another 30 days. So be in prayer for her, be in prayer for Greg, and I'm sure that's a little bit of a, a nuisance there, having one of those things. Uh, Brother David's here tonight, but uh, he's been in and out seeing doctors. You want to give us an update at all? Brother David is not in the building at this time. There he is. He's just in a different spot. All right, so let's be in prayer for Brother David. Donna, you want to give us an update? So lupus was the uh, diagnosis, and so be in prayer for her. And uh, regiment there, the upcoming. Uh, Gary Rainey is home now, and we have an update on him, Gary? Good deal. It might be a blessing then, right? <laughs> Amen. Hallelujah. Um, James Corley, uh, also James' mother, Barbara, and upcoming surgery on the 17th, correct? Twenty-ninth now, okay. Okay, and as we're going over those, Pastor gave me the the updates after this was printed, so you'll forgive me for not making them.
corrections there. We have Leslie Bowman uh, with Brother Gary. Do you have any updates on your brother there? Okay. We have uh, Ray and Joy Thompson. We have Rita and Teddy Bishop. Uh, Miss Sue Beebe. And we have Amy Kenemuth. And then we've removed Miss Connie there. And Daryl Warren. Okay. Pastor says we can take uh, number six under other. Daryl Warren, we can take him off. He's recovered. Uh, still have the situation with Sasha, with Tim and Priscilla, so we please be in prayer for that. Uh, any other unspokens because besides the ones that have already mentioned them to me? Any others? Not that you mentioned your silent request, but didn't, did mention that you had one. Okay. There's one more, Brian. Okay. I'm sure we all have some when we think about it. And then Zach, Ray, and the co-workers there, our military and our law enforcement. And then our ladies' Bible study was the last thing that's highlighted there. Any other updates? Or Yes, sir, Connor? Uh -huh. So let's be in prayer for the eight-year-old family. Uh, the eight-year-old daughter did pass away over this weekend. It's a tough weekend. It uh, brings back memories yeah, that we don't like to go back to. Yes, sir. Okay, God bless you. I see that hand, and we'll come back to you. No, I'm just kidding. And his first name was Herman? Harmon. Okay, Harmon Pretty. Amen. And did you see T David about concerning Ms. Terry? Good. Amen. I know we had something there. Others? Yes, ma'am. Okay. Take off number seven there. Rick Corley. Doing much better. That's a blessing. Yes, sir. Gary? Oh, good. Amen. Number 48, under illness and health concerns. And Debbie's doing well, too. Good. Larry and Debbie, they used to be on staff here, so for some of you folks that might not know them. Others? Yes, sir. Pastor? I wanted to mention, um, her name is uh, Nellie. I don't have her last name, but she's Pam Walker's friend. She visited here a couple times during our Sunday. She was in a car accident yesterday. Oh, my. Amen. So be in specific prayer for each of our events, the teen camp, the vacation Bible school, and our upcoming revival. Uh, plan on inviting some folks, and some of you teens can invite some of your friends to come to the teen camp, and uh, that would be a blessing, too, to get underneath the gospel for a whole week and under good good environment and some good recreational 
stuff as well, might meet somebody, might meet the, their future wife, might meet their future husband, you know how those camps go. I think often about the, now that's not what I meant, but um, uh, I think about the Williams is what I was thinking about. Uh, they met at camp and then they were counselors at camp and they got married and now they have, they have like a, uh, 19 kids, no, they, they have been fruitful and multiply and they, they're all just awesome folks, yeah. All right, yes, Mike? Well, amen. Well, amen. Over 900,000 tracks have been taken uh, to the post office by this group of people in the track ministry here, and so that's a blessing. Amen. Good report. Yes, sir. All right. Super. So would you like pastor to articulate tonight and speak clearly enough to where we can all understand him? That would be a good plus. Amen. Okay. All right. Well, let's do a prayer for you and your mom's ear infection. Amen. Hope it doesn't turn into that dizzy stuff that sometimes goes on along with that. Yes, sir. No, just recent reminders, the folks that asked to be reminded to be in prayer for. Okay. Well, absolutely, yeah. Number 21, Dolores Emharth. We're going to go ahead and highlight her. Uh, Brian, those just folks that's called in or has mentioned in, yeah. So we just kind of get a, at the end of the month, we do a clean slate, and then we start highlighting fresh and anew. And so some of, you, some of them, you say, well, gosh, it's just, the, you know, this is our first Wednesday night. Those people just shared things with me. And oh, no, sir, it's, it's anybody and everybody. Yes, indeed. And you, you are all right. You have permission by the pastor to pray for all these people. Yeah. We're just... Uh, we have certain ones that folks are you know, asking about. Most, most of those are updates uh, about folks that's already been on the list. Okay. Yes, ma'am. Glenda's mom, Lilo Hoover, just like the vacuum cleaner, and I tease her husband about that often. Um, hip replacement. And then a little, uh, little Brooklyn. Brooklyn was the mom, and they did, na they did name the child, and of course held the child, but the child was stillborn, and I'd be in prayer for that. Situation is difficult, obviously. Pastor, would you be kind enough to come and just pray for all of us and all the folks? And, and then we'll have a, or you want to tie that in at the end, or however you want to do it. If you want to have Connor do his, his uh, song first, however you want to do it. Of course, as we pray, we always invite you to if you'd like to come down to the altar and pray, or if you'd like to take your prayer list there and, and pray where you're at, uh, pray with us as we go to Lord in prayer. Lord, we love you. Thank you again for your goodness and grace. God, thank you for <clears throat> allowing us to be here to, uh, again on a Wednesday night. God, help us to never take that for granted. Uh, Lord, it is a privilege to be in your house. And Lord, there's many here tonight that gave you praise as something, a prayer that you answered, Lord, a way that you worked. And God, certainly we have much to be thankful for. And God, we come to you tonight with some fresh prayer requests on our hearts and our mind. And Lord, especially some in particular, we'd like to...
mention this evening, uh, God, as we come to you in prayer, we want to continue to pray for Miss Darlene, uh, Lord, as she's uh, been in and out of the hospital. And uh, Lord, we know that she's been going through dialysis and Lord had trouble with her uh, breathing and uh, God rehab. I just pray that you touch her in a special way. Uh, God, we think about uh, uh, Miss Nellie, Lord, just been in this car accident yesterday. I pray that you be with her, uh, God, as she recovers from that. Lord, we think about the church family at Landmark Baptist Church. Lord, suffering a loss, uh, God, in this last week. And I just pray that you be with them in a special way. Uh, Lord, we think about Harmon Pretty. As was mentioned tonight, God, I pray that you uh, be with him with the physical needs that he has. Uh, Lord, we think about our uh, vacation Bible school, God, our teen camp, our revival. And Lord, each one of those events, God, has a special purpose. Uh, God, we think about our young kids that are becoming for Bible school. Help us, Lord, to give them, most importantly, the gospel to them. And God, we pray for their safety and protection while they're here. Pray for all of our staff. Lord, we pray that that would help them to grow spiritually. We think about our teens as they go off to camp. Uh, God, we would have a desire to see them take some time away from everything else. Uh, Lord, just separate themselves from the normal routine of life. And God, just focus on your word for the whole week. And I just pray that you do a special work in their hearts. Pray for their safety and protection while they're there. Lord, we think about our revival with Dr. Ralph Saxton coming up in August. Uh, God, it'll be here soon. And Lord, I pray that, that you prepare our hearts already for that. Uh, Lord, for that cup coming. We think about Ms. Betty Carter this week. Lord, we know she's, uh, God had some trouble and uh, concern in her heart. I pray that you touch her in a special way. Uh, we want to continue to lift up Brother David. God, we're so glad he was able to be here this evening. Uh, Lord, we know that he's been battling. I pray that you put a special touch on him. And Lord, with the other tests and appointments and everything still coming up, uh, God, I just pray for a special blessing on him. Uh, Lord, tonight, Miss Dolores Imhoff was mentioned, Lord, just not doing very well. And God, we just pray for her. God, just pray for her body. Touch her with the hand of the great physician. Uh, God, as uh, Miss Donna Schultz had mentioned this week, uh, Lord, battling lupus, and I pray that you'd help her. Uh, God, keep your hand upon her. Uh, Lord, as she deals with that, and Lord, touch her with the hand of the great physician. Uh, God, we're thankful to hear the good report for Gary Rainey. Pray that you'd help him continue as he tries to get back to work. Uh, God, we want to continue to mention Miss Barbara. Uh, Lord, as her uh, appointments coming up, tests coming up, and uh, God, Lord, uh, potential surgery later in August, I pray that you'd be with Miss Barbara. Uh, God, thank you, Lord, for uh, so far for Leslie Bowman, but we want to continue to pray for him. Lord, we know the family had battled COVID. And I just pray that you be with him and the needs that are there still. Uh, God, we think about Ray and Joy Thompson. God, we know the physical needs that they have. Uh, Lord, also for Rita and, and Teddy. Uh, Lord, and, and God, we're so glad to be able to see Miss Rita this last week. But we also want to lift up Brother Teddy, God, and the other needs that are there. I want to remember Miss Sue Beebe. Uh, God, and want to continue to pray for Miss Amy as she recovers from her surgery. And Lord, the cancer that she's battling. Uh, God, we think about Miss Brooklyn, Lord, that was mentioned tonight, God, with the stillborn baby. And, and God, we just pray that you be with that family in a special way tonight. And Lord, give them the peace of God that love uh, passeth all understanding, Lord, that only you can give. And God, also for Miss Cooper, Lord, with the hip replacement coming up, we just pray, uh, God, that you would already prepare her body for that. And Lord, that be successful and improve her quality of health and just watch over her. We want to continue to pray for Brother Tim, Miss Priscilla, Lord, with the needs uh, uh, regarding Sasha. I got several unspoken requests. Lord, we know that uh, there's some needs there. Lord, you know what they are. Uh, God, we don't have to know. You have an answer. Uh, God, we just lift them up before you. And also we think about Brother uh, Zach Ray and the co-workers. Lord, we know the opposition and persecution that they faced. And we want to continue to pray for their safety and protection. God, be with the many other needs. Lord, none that were unintentionally forgotten. Uh, Lord, uh, but you know what they are. I pray that you just continue to be with Lord, our church, as we move forward for the cause of Christ, pray that you be the services tonight. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. All right, Connor, if you're ready, why don't you go ahead and do a song for us. Test, test. Hello? There we are. I've been there and 
so have you. The sky turns gray out of the blue. While the gathering clouds replace the perfect day. It's never been this dark before. And as the rain begins to pour, while it's just begun, isn't there to stay above the storm the sun still shines the reason for those silver lines you can see the skies are blue it's still clear from heaven's view above the storm the peaceful calm he weighs the winds within his palm you can trust in him when clouds begin to form. Cause the sun still shines above the storm. Right now there's nothing you can do. There's still a haze you can't see through. And the fear within can take away your smile. But in your darkness, he will bless. And as he draws you to himself, on the other side, just know that all the while, above the storm, the sun still shines, the reason for those silver lines. You can see the skies are blue. It's all clear from heaven's view. Above the storm, a peaceful calm. He weighs the winds within his palm. You can trust in him when clouds begin to form. Cause the sun still shines above the storm. The lightning storms, the thunder quakes, remind you of your worst mistakes. Soon the wind fades at his will, when the master whispers, peace be still. Above the storm, the sun still shines, the reason for those silver lines. You can see the skies are blue, and it's still clear from heaven's view. Above the storm, a peaceful calm, he weighs the winds within his palm. You can trust in him when clouds begin to form, cause the sun still shines above the storm. The sun still shines above the storm. Sure do appreciate that song, don't you? Yeah. Amen. All right, I wanted to say a couple of things about just some of our, uh, a couple of our things coming up. Uh, I think I might have said something about this Sunday, but I just want to mention again, uh, the whole purpose for the fundraisers is to help the teenagers get to, to youth camp. And uh, really it's two-part. You know, sure, there's been some folks that's helped uh, with sponsoring our children or sponsoring the teenagers for camp, and that's wonderful. Uh, but I also like them to have a little bit of skin in the game too, amen? So it doesn't hurt them to do a couple of fundraisers, uh, wash some cars and serve you some dinner and things of that nature. So uh, we appreciate if you're able to come out. But the ultimate goal, obviously, the main reason for that is to help them get to camp. And the big reason we want to see them come get uh, to youth camp is because I believe it's a unique opportunity for the Lord to work in their hearts, amen. And I think I testified a little, uh, I answered the call to preach at youth camp. And uh, 
So uh, believe it or not, it was in California, Big Bear Camp uh, is the name of the youth camp we, our church took us to in California. And, and uh, I knew the Lord had already been dealing with my heart, but I just I couldn't go on any further. So I was 14 years old and I answered the call to preach one day, the next day. Uh, the pastor was kind enough to let everybody know, and then they had me preach. And uh, wasn't that nice? That, that was so nice of him. And uh, I was scared, and I didn't know what else to do, church. I, I just found a scripture in the Bible, and I stood up and yelled for a little bit, and then read a little bit more scripture and yelled for a little bit. And, you know, 20-something, 30-something years later, I'm still doing the same thing. I just grab a scripture somewhere and just yell for a little while and grab another one, Brother David, and try to yell on that one for a little bit. That's about it. But uh, I do know, just over the years going to camp, that, that it's just a great opportunity to get kids away from all the routine, everything else that they do. So please be in much prayer. And then, of course, not just that, our, our vacation Bible school. My, these kids need Jesus, don't they? I mean, I'm talking about the younger that we can lead them to the Lord. The younger they can come to know Christ, the better. And then I pray that after we can win the children to the Lord, then we can try to reach their family. And, uh, you know, no disrespect to Brother Brian, but we'd love to have a high turnover rate on the bus ministry. And what I mean by that is, we win the kids to the Lord, and when their families to the Lord, then the families bring them to church, and then we get a fresh group of kids riding on the bus, amen? That's kind of the goal, amen? And then, of course, with the revival, that's really for the church. That's for all of us. And, uh, you know, revival is intended for something that's been alive, and so revival is geared towards the church, uh, not necessarily the lost. Now, we pray that people will get saved through that. That is some of the fruit that can come uh, from revival, but certainly be in much prayer about all these things. Uh, go ahead and take your Bibles and go to the book of Acts chapter 1. Acts chapter 1, and while you're turning there, I did also want to make mention, uh, in case you've not been here or been out of town or whatever the case is, uh, if you notice on the front of our prayer bulletin, we also still have uh, three new members that's listed on there, and that's Miss Debbie Slack, uh, that's Miss Brenda's sister. She's not here this evening, but she's usually there uh, with Miss Brenda, and of course Miss Brenda over here been already helping us sing in the choir and singing specials for us. Isn't that good, church? And glad to have her. And then of course this last Sunday we had Miss Pam Walker rejoin the church. Uh, I say rejoin because she's been here before, and uh, uh, she said that Brother Mark was able to baptize her. I guess it's been a bit ago, brother, and and so we're excited about uh, having her and our new members. So uh, be an encouragement, be a help. Uh, reach out to them and just try to be a blessing. Acts chapter 1, and we'll begin reading in verse 1. Acts chapter 1, verse 1. The former treatise have I made, O Theophilus, of all that Jesus began both to do and teach, unto the day in which he was taken up, after that he, through the Holy Ghost, had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen. I want you to note there that the Bible says that there was given a commandment to the apostles. In other words, there's, there's a job to do. There's work to be done. There's things that I, I want you to accomplish. There's things that I want you to follow. Had given commandments unto the apostles whom he had chosen, to whom he also showed himself alive. After his passion, by many infallible proofs, being seen to them forty days, and speaking of the things pertaining to the kingdom of God. Verse number four, And being assembled together with them, commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. Did you catch that part there in verse 4, church? Commanded them. See, we know that in verse 2 there was a commandment that was given, and we know that part of that commandment was the Great Commission, which we read about in verse number 8. So we know that in verse 2 there's an establishment of a commandment, but then in verse 4 it says that commanded them that they should not depart from Jerusalem, but wait. Anytime that the Lord has revealed something in my life, in my heart, and then He comes back, He says, this is what I want to do, but I want you to wait a little while. I personally struggle with it. I told you, sometimes I struggle with patience. Amen? You know what we just read that the Lord gave them? He just gave them a red light. He just gave them a red light. Let's read on just a little bit. He said, but wait for the promise of the Father, which, he, which saith He, Ye have heard of me, for John truly baptized with water, and you baptized with the Holy Ghost not many days hence. When they therefore were come together, they asked of him, the Lord saying, Wilt thou at this time restore again the kingdom to Israel? And he said unto them, It is not for you to know 
the times or the seasons which the Father hath put on his own power. But ye shall receive power out that the Holy Ghost has come upon you, and ye shall be witnesses unto me both in Jerusalem and Judea and Samaria and unto the uttermost part of the earth. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for tonight. Thank you, Lord, for the blessings that we've already received. We thank you for the time of prayer. Help us to not take them lightly. Help us to be faithful in lifting them up, uh, Lord, before your feet. I pray, God, that you'd be with us tonight. I pray that you'd give us wisdom, clear our minds and our hearts, God, that we may focus on the message at hand. And, Lord, use it to be a challenge to us tonight. In Jesus' name, amen. Amen. So we see here in this chapter, there's already a lot, quite a bit of things going on. Uh, we see that there was a commandment given. And uh, understand, uh, church, let me, let me say something too. When we get to verse number 8, we also know this as the Great Commission. Uh, we also know that the Bible says, Go ye into all the world and preach the gospel to every creature. Also part of the Great Commission. So essentially our Great Commission or commandment uh, was given to us to preach the gospel, to spread the gospel. We all have a duty and responsibility. That wasn't a suggestion by the Lord. Amen. That was a commandment. Unfortunately, oftentimes what we see is that it's not practiced as the Great Commission, but more like the Great Omission. In other words, something that's omitted out of our lives. Actually, when you think about some of the categories of how sin would break down in our life, there is sins of commission, doing those things that we shouldn't do, and then there is sins of omission, not doing things that the Lord has told us to do. But what we're looking at here is really kind of our key thought is there in verse number 4, where he told them, but wait, but wait for the promise of the Father. There's some other things that transpire here in chapter 1, and Lord willing, we will get into some of those things. And then we know as chapter 2 as being the great scene at Pentecost. But there's some things that happened before that, and in this particular moment, the Lord told them to wait. They were given the commandment, they knew what they were supposed to do, but for that moment was wait. So essentially, that was like a divine red light in their life. Now, how many of you enjoy red lights? Nobody's raising their hand. I didn't think so. I, I don't enjoy red lights. I, I mean, it seems like, I don't know if it's you, but every time I'm in a hurry to get somewhere, I get caught at every single red light. I do. I don't know how it happens. I, I don't know what's going on. I, I don't, like, how does the lights know that I'm running late? How do the lights know that I'm running behind it? Well, I'll get caught at every single one. But nevertheless, there's something that I found out about red lights, even though they can be annoying, they do serve a purpose. Now, I want to just give you some introductory thoughts just to kind of help you uh, gear our minds to where we're trying to go tonight. Red lights are not always permanent, right? They're not generally permanent. Uh, they're a temporary thing. And so what the instruction that they were getting from the Lord here was, I just want you to hold on a minute, okay? This is, I want you to do a great work, but I want you to just hold on just a moment. And then, of course, we see things start to explode in chapter 2. So we know that red lights aren't permanent. We'll talk a little bit more about that in just a moment. But something else, and these are just, again, introductory thoughts just to kind of get us into the message. Uh, when you're in the red light, it's generally advised to stay in your car and keep the engine running. Right now, I know some people are going to say, "Well, you know, my car automatically turns off uh, to save gas and all that." That's not what I'm talking about. But generally, what I, I, even me, when I'm frustrated, waiting at a red light, I don't actually get out of the car. I do actually stay in the car. Believe it or not, okay? I have not, on record yet, said I'm not waiting for this light. I'm getting out of my car and I'm running. Right? I'm not done that yet. Now, I'm not saying I won't ever do that, brother Gary, because there's no telling what I'll do. Okay? I may get to the day, time and say, I'm not waiting on this slide, I'm out of here. But generally it's advised that when you stop at a red light, not only do you wait for your turn to go green, but you stay in the car, right? Say, so why does that matter? Because you know what I've come to have, I find out sometimes? Things happen sometimes in your life, things happen sometimes in church, things don't go as good as you wanted them to go, and then people start to bail. Are you with me? I've heard all the time, well, things aren't as exciting as they once were. And people start to get out of the car. People start to bail. A temporary stop or a temporary holding from the Lord does not mean that it's permanent. 
And just as when you're waiting on a red light, you don't necessarily get out of the car, you don't necessarily jump ship just because you're not making the progress that you thought you should be making. Are you with me? So keep that in mind. Again, these are just introductory thoughts as we get in. Red lights are not generally permanent. Uh, red lights, uh, you stay in the car and keep the engine running. But then also, something else that I have found that is good. You know, I try to find something positive out of everything. Amen. Even if it's bad, we, we, you know, we got the Bible says in everything give thanks. And boy, sometimes I wonder, Lord, do you really want me to give thanks in everything that you've given me? I believe the answer is yes. There's always a reason that we can be thankful for. But you know, one of the things that you can do is you can take care of some business while you're waiting, right? Now, what you're able to do is maybe that's a better time to adjust your seat. You know, you got in the car. This happened to me several times this week. My wife has been driving my truck, and it makes me nervous, okay? Now, she's been driving my truck, and then I get in the truck, and then my knees are up against the, compressed against the dash because she scooted my seat up, Right? And so, maybe at a red light, it's a better time to make some adjustments. Ideally, you do it before you go. But if you forgot or you didn't do it, then maybe that's, you don't want to. I don't recommend that while you're going down the road. Okay? Maybe that's a time where, uh, you know, you, you, you drop something. You can, if you can quickly grab and pick it up. Uh, now, when you get my age, you start to break things when you reach too far. Okay? You'll understand that a little bit later. Some of y'all smile a little bit tonight, okay? It's all right. But nevertheless, there's still things that you can do at red lights. You know what I found interesting is we're going to read here in just a little bit that the apostles did some things. Just because the Lord told them the way doesn't mean that they say, well, we're just not going to do nothing. That's not what happened. So understand that there's some things. It can be a prosperous moment. Uh, you can do There's things that you can accomplish in those few minutes or seconds or whatever time you have. The third thing I want to mention before we really get into the message is that you keep your eye on the light. Now, how many has ever come up behind somebody and then they start talking on their phone? Or they start messaging? Or they start checking their email? And then the light turns green. And, what, and they don't go. Man, you want to talk about road rage. People get upset. The thought that they had to wait through a light and now you're not moving and now they might miss their light. Man, people get upset. I, I mean, they start, what happens? They start to they start to honk and say, you know, basically saying, go, you know, move. It's time to go on. You're going to make me miss. And then, boy, if that ever happens, causes you to miss a light, well, that's a real test of your Christianity right there because some of you might say things that you ought to not say. Are you with me? Is this just me or, or, or do you guys experience these things too? Because you guys are playing like you're innocent out here. Amen. I know how you are. I know how some of you are. Amen. It's a test of your Christianity. You might lose your sweet spirit because somebody caused you to miss a light, and God forbid you have to wait through another wet red light. Amen? But the idea is that you keep your eye on the light. You know what that means? You just keep waiting on the Lord until the Lord gives the green light, then you can move forward for the cause of Christ. So again, these are just introductory thoughts. Now our teens are in here, now we can preach. We was just waiting for you guys to get in here. All right. Acts chapter 1, verses 1 through 8. Now, we already established that a red light, number one, our first main thought tonight is a red light is not permanent. And church, again, this is where sometimes I personally struggle. I asked you several weeks ago, pray for me, sometimes I, I struggle with patience, right? I struggle with that. I, I, wanna, I have something in my mind, I have a thought, I have a fitness goal, whatever it is, and, and I feel like i got to do it right now, right? You know, for example, when you, when you get up to the idea of training for, for a full marathon, you don't just get up and decide to run one that day. I don't recommend that. It's not wise. I'm not even sure I recommend it after several months of training. Okay? I had a friend of mine one time say, do you realize that you don't have to run a marathon? And as I appreciate that, I wish somebody had told me before. But what I'm saying is that really it takes a lot of time. It takes a lot of discipline. And it takes a while to get to that place where your body can physically stand, even if you're in good shape, you still have to prepare for it. You, you still have to train for it, right? But my problem is I wake up tomorrow and I want to do it tomorrow and then I could get hurt because I'm not ready for it, right? And then my wife has to kind of reel me back in a little bit. But red lights are not always permanent. Understand a lot of things that maybe God has plans for you. And for the record, I believe God still has a plan for each and every one of you here tonight. If you're here tonight and you're breathing, it's, that's evidence, that's proof 
that God still has a plan and a purpose for you. So don't question tonight whether God still has a plan and a purpose for me because He does. Because He does. And sometimes we get to the place, well, I don't know how much time that, that I have. The reality is, church, I know we kid and joke sometimes, but I could be the oldest person here tonight. If my time to go home to be with the Lord was tonight or tomorrow and your time is still 10 years from now, then I've got less time than you. I'm older than you. I'm, I'm, I'm at closer to crossing over into glory. So the reality is we don't know. None of us know how much time that we have. That's just a fact of life. We know that the Bible says it is appointed unto man once to die, but after this the judgment. We know that our time is coming. We know that we have an appointment with death. We know that one day the Lord's going to take us home, but we don't know exactly when that time is. In fact, one of the references here was, Lord, are you going to restore your kingdom on the earth at this time? He says, it's not for you to know. You know, I'm glad that the Lord told, told us that something, because can you imagine how we would live if we actually did know? The truth is we'd probably live like the devil and then be like cramming everything in on the day before. Lord, let me confess all these things that I've done, try to make right, because you're coming back tomorrow. It's actually a good thing that we don't know. We need to live every day like he could be today. Hey, it could be before the service is over. But, but before we, I mean, we got plans for Sunday, we got plans for the weekend, we got plans for Friday, uh, and Lord willing, all those things will transpire, but the reality is we don't know. But what I'm saying is that, friend, just because the Lord says wait, just because the Lord says hold on, just because God says, hey, wait, I, I'm preparing some things first, does not mean that it's permanent. And oftentimes we can let something as a temporary divine red light in our life be a discouragement for us because there's a place that we want to be or something that we even know that is ordained of God, but God is just saying to hold on a little while. God is saying wait. Now we know that what He had commanded the disciples to do was part of His divine plan. I mean, the Scripture says that God is not willing that any should perish, but that all should come to repentance. God wants everyone to be saved. Amen? So we know that it was His will to spread the gospel, but for just a moment, He told them to wait. So number one, it's important to remember that a red light is not permanent. Simply refer to learning to wait on the Lord. Number two, I want to point out that red lights are also for our protection. Now the truth is, the reason we have a red light is because the other side got the green light. And there would be chaos... There would be accidents. There would be a lot of trouble if everyone had green lights all the time. Or if you only had one road that had green lights and the other road had red lights, that would also be problems because one road's always going and the other one's not going at all and then people would try to come out when it's not their turn and it would cause more problems. So the reality is that if you really think about it, if you're honest with yourself, the reason why it's red the reason why it's telling us not to go is because there's oncoming traffic going the other direction. It's a reminder to us, church, that again, why a divine red light is not bad because, first of all, it's a reminder to wait on the Lord that it's not permanent, but second of all, it's for our protection. Now, I'll tell you something that, I, I, that I've seen is just the Lord spoke to my heart about. At these times where I'm in a hurry, I get there now, i got a red light, and then I'll get on down the road and I see a, a bad accident. And then I have to think to myself, maybe the Lord was protecting me. Maybe the Lord wanted me to have this red light because He was actually keeping me from some other trouble. Right? The red lights are not just designed to be an annoyance. They're designed also for your protection. And oftentimes, and keep in mind, when we're referring to red lights, we are talking about spiritually tonight. I mean, we're illustrating it with something we all know and understand and can relate to. But we are talking about spiritual divine red lights. They're not permanent, but they're also designed for our protection. So just because God says wait, doesn't mean that He's trying to just test your patience, but He could, friend, also be protecting you because He knows there's danger up ahead. Or you're not ready. You're not ready. Now, I don't know that. The Lord may know that. The Lord does know that, whether you're ready or not. So it's important to understand, friend, and we're just looking at this thought tonight when the Lord said, but wait, that just because the Lord puts a divine red light doesn't mean that it's bad. So first of all, we know a red light is not permanent. Second of all, we know a red light is for protection. 
But thirdly, something that I've come to find out, red lights generally come before there's significant progress. Red lights come before there's significant progress. Now, I, I want, before we expound on that thought a little bit more, I want to read just a little bit more. Let's go down to verse 9. And when he had spoken these things, while he beheld, he was taken up, and a cloud received out of their sight. And while they looked steadfastly towards heaven, and they went up, behold, two men stood by them in white apparel, which also said, Ye men of Galilee, why stand ye gazing up into heaven? If this same Jesus, which is taken up from you into heaven, shall it so come in like manner as ye have seen him go into heaven. Verse 12, Then returned they unto Jerusalem from the mount called Olivet, which is Jerusalem, a Sabbath, which is from Jerusalem, a Sabbath day's journey. And when they were come in, they went into the upper room where abode both Peter and James and John and Andrew and Philip and Thomas, Bartholomew and Matthew, James the son of Alphaeus and Simon Zelotes and Judas the brother of James. These all continued with one accord, notice, in prayer and supplication. So this time wasn't a time for them to quit. It wasn't a time for them to say, well, the Lord said no, so we just ought to not do this thing. Well, you know, we, we've been stopped. Uh, we had great ambition. We had great goals. We were doing good. No, they started to gather together as they did. In other words, until they got another message from the Lord, they continued doing what they had been doing before. Church, don't you see that one of the greatest lessons that we can do while we're waiting on God while we're waiting on the Lord to open the door, while we're waiting on the Lord to give us an answer, while we're waiting on the Lord to give us direction, is just to continue doing what we've already been doing. They continued to gather together, and they met in prayer, they met in supplication, they met as they had before, essentially they were still having church. Paul told young Timothy to continue thou in the things which thou hast learned in the middle of his Biblical and pastoral advice that he was giving to young Timothy, one of the greatest pieces of advice to continue to do those things that you've been taught, Timothy. So sometimes people say all the time, well, I don't know what to do. Well, until the Lord tells you what to do, just continue what to do, what you know is right. Continue to be faithful. Continue to do what it is that God wants you to do. The things that we know God wants us to do, continue in those things. So the disciples didn't say, well, God said no. Oh, you know, God's not going to let us do this thing. He said He wanted us to preach the gospel, but here we are still stuck in Jerusalem. No, they continued to prepare for that. They continued to pray. They continued to be in preparation for what God has called them to do, which, let me further say, when God puts a calling on your life, it should be a calling for preparation. So a reminder to us, church, they didn't just stop. They didn't just throw in the towel. They continued doing what God had called them to do, what they knew pleased the Lord. Now, red light often comes before progress. Once you finally get that green light, and boy, if you're like me, you're ready to go. You know, then you start to make some serious, serious progress. How many of you ever think, man, if I could just get past this light, then I can get over on the interstate, or then, then I could really be making some progress. Now I really feel like I'm going somewhere. You know, I'm past all city lights on this particular route, then I know I'm going. You, you know what I've come to find out? That oftentimes these moments, just as we described earlier, that there are opportunities to address other things, and we're going to look at something else in a second, but oftentimes when God brings these divine red lights in our life, and then when He finally gives the clear, gives the green light, I believe it makes us thankful for the progress that He has allowed us to have. Because oftentimes we'll say, well, you know, I've been in a, a rut for a while. I've not, it feels like I'm not going anywhere. It feels like I'm not accomplishing anything. And then when God opens the door and gives a green light, you know what it actually does? It makes you go back and reflect and say, wow, thank you, Lord, for allowing me to make the progress that I have. Another reminder, friend, to be thankful in everything that God has given us. Now, I want to read on just a little bit more because I, I want to give, share a thought with you. Let's continue on. In verse 15, And in those days Peter stood up in the midst of the disciples and said the number of the names together were about 120. Men and brethren, this scripture must needs have been fulfilled, which the Holy Ghost by the mouth of David spake before concerning Judas, 
which was guide to them that took Jesus. For he was numbered with us and had obtained part of this ministry. Now this man purchased the field with the reward of his iniquity, and falling headlong, he burst asunder into the mist, and his bowels gushed out. All it was known is, and it was known unto all the dwellers at Jerusalem, insomuch as the field is called in their proper tongue Alcademia, which is to say the field of blood. So understand what he's saying, and he's acknowledging here is that, hey, look, we're missing somebody who had a part of this ministry. In fact, he references that. He's talking about Judas here. So while they have a red light, while God's told them to hold on for a little bit, they're addressing other needs that they had in the ministry. And in this particular moment, he's referring to Judas, who had part of the ministry, the one that betrayed Christ, the one that was a guide to them, that a guide to them to take Jesus. He's saying, we need to replace him. Even though that he was the betrayer, even though, that as we talked about Sunday, him being a perpetrator, even though he was all these other things, he still has to be replaced. We still need somebody in his place to serve. So as you see in the, the following scriptures, they take time, uh, they, they, they uh, prayed, they followed the Lord about who would be next to replace Judas. So it's another time, friend, when these divine red lights come into our lives. It's a great reminder to us, God, what am I missing in my life before you choose for me to move forward? Because the reality is there could be some things in our life that are missing before God decides to open a door. Maybe our prayer life is not what it should be. Maybe our personal devotions are not what it should be. Maybe our a faithfulness to the house of God is not what it should be. Maybe it's something else. Maybe there's a relationship that needs to be restored before God will allow us to move forward. And so simply a good question to ask when we're in these situations, Lord, is there something that I'm missing? Is there something that I need to do before you would have me move forward? And that was what the disciples did. They handled the business that needed to be handled. The divine red light in their life wasn't mean quit, wasn't mean throwing in the towel, wasn't mean I'm going to be discouraged. I'm going to continue doing what God's called me to do, and then I'm going to address some things that are missing in our ministry. That's literally what they did. And friend, it's a great example to us. Not all red lights are bad. Not all divine red light or divine red lights, I can tell you, are for a purpose or for a reason. So we've discussed tonight a red light is not permanent. A red light is for protection. A red light generally comes before progress. And then, of course, a red light can be prosperous, as we just read. A red light can be prosperous. How many of you could look back at times in your life and you could testify to circumstances where God had to set you down? And through those circumstances, you learned that you had no choice but to seek the Lord. You had no option. Sort of like when Jonah was in the belly of the whale and the Bible says that he cried out out of the belly of hell. Cried out to God. I mean, who, who else is going to rescue him? Who else is going to hear him in the belly of the whale? He had no choice but to call out to the Lord. And I'm sure that he could look back to that time and say, you know what, in that moment I learned to depend on God more. And maybe we can understand that these divine red lights can be spiritually prosperous for us because we can look back at those moments in our lives and say, I had no choice but to call on God. I had nobody else to call. I had nobody else that understood. I had nobody else that could give me an answer. So I had to seek the Lord. And because of that, that spiritual divine red light made me a more prosperous Christian, in that I learned to depend more on God. So, friend, realize that red lights can also be prosperous. They can be a moment of spiritual growth in our lives. They can be a time where, as the Bible says, to grow in grace and knowledge of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. And understand that we never get to the place, or let me rephrase that, we should never get to the place where we're done growing. Well, I'm as close to the Lord as I'm ever going to be. I'm as close to God as I'm ever going to be. 
Well, you know, I've grown. I've had a lot of spiritual growth. I, I've got a lot of scripture committed to my, my memory. Friend, don't you understand that that's just not close enough? Now, I'm not saying you haven't grown. I'm not saying that God hasn't used you. God, I'm not saying that you haven't been blessed. What I'm saying is that don't stop growing. You've not reached the pinnacle of what God wants you to be yet. Amen? Forgetting those things which are behind and reaching forth in those things which are before, we have a tendency to believe that, that that's just for negative things. But I can I believe it also can be for positive things too. God blessed us. We were able to do this in our life. God blessed this area in our lives. And we think, well, I've done good enough. No, just keep pressing on for the cause of Christ. He later on said, I pressed toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God. It's a reminder to us, church, that divine red lights can be prosperous. They they can be an opportunity for spiritual growth. Red lights are not always permanent. Red lights are for protection. Red lights come before progress. Red lights can be prosperous. And the last thing we're going to give you tonight is red light gives perspective. Red light gives perspective. Now, as you read on in this chapter, you'll find like in verse number, uh, verse 24, and they prayed and said, Thou, Lord, which knowest the hearts of the men, show whether these two hath chosen that he may take part of this ministry and apostleship from which Judas by transgression fell, that he might go to his own place. And they gave forth their lots, and the lot fell upon Matthias, and he was numbered with the eleven apostles. So now they've got their twelve Apostles, they used this time where the Lord said wait to restore the 12th disciple or 12th apostle. And then you get into chapter 2 and verse 1. And when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all with one accord in one place. And then, of course, that's a whole other chapter. It's a uh, you know, power-packed chapter. But they were still together. They were still serving together. They accomplished some things together. And friend, that is part of what God wants us to do. Understand that through this, I believe that the disciples gained perspective. You know, the Lord told us to hold on, but He he obviously wanted us to address some things. The Lord told us to hold on. He must have known we weren't ready. The Lord told us to hold on. He must have knew that there there was some danger up ahead. He wasn't ready for us to go. The Lord told us to hold on, and we were able to grow stronger together as disciples for Christ. The Lord told us to hold on. We had to learn to depend on Him because we didn't know and we didn't have an answer. Red lights give us perspective too because you ever notice that sometimes when you stop at a red light you think about things. Your mind ever start to wander. Now if we're, if we're not careful it can wander in the wrong direction. You know. But if we give it to the Lord you know one of the good things that you can do? You can literally pray. You can literally call on the Lord. And maybe in that moment, God has given you a simple, why don't you slow down a minute and remember me for a second? Why don't you stop for just a second? I mean, you haven't even talked to me all day. Now nah, I had to put some red lights, literal red lights in there. You see, red lights can give perspective, friend. Divine, we should learn to appreciate Red lights. Now, I, I realize that some of you are just not going to appreciate your little red light. But they can give you perspective, Fred. I bet this upcoming week, the next time you stop at a red light, you're going to remember this message. And you can remember that, hey, maybe God is trying to protect you. And you can remember that, hey, maybe God is trying to give you some perspective. Hey, maybe that God is trying to remind you of some things. Maybe He's using that moment so that you can think about Him. But what I can tell you, friend, is that generally speaking, if you learn to wait on God, and if you learn to depend on Him, you learn to call on Him, I promise you God will give you some perspective. And in this case, I believe that they grew closer together. They were still together. They went through all this together. I don't see anywhere here that they started blaming fingers, pointing fingers. As you see, well, you know, you're the reason why we can't move forward. No. They were still together. And then all of a sudden, chapter 2, after the Lord told them the way, look at what happened in chapter 2. I mean, 3,000 souls were added to the church. They were saved. They were baptized. Uh, they joined the church. I mean, from what we can tell in Scripture, there was the, this was the biggest growth. This was the biggest movement of God that we can find right here in chapter 2. But we often forget that something had to happen in the previous chapter for that to come to pass. 
And just one thing, one insight that the Bible gives us is that God told him to wait a minute. Just hold on a minute. What's God trying to tell you tonight, friend, is maybe there's some things in your life where God's been saying, just count on me. Just wait on me. I know about your circumstance. I know about your situation. Why don't you just learn to depend on me? And I'll see you through it. Let's all stand to our feet, every head bowed, every eye closed. I believe there's some great lessons that we looked at tonight, church, that God could help you with. We need to learn tonight to appreciate divine red lights. Times in our life where the Lord just said, hey, hold on a minute. Maybe tonight you've come in with a burden on your heart, something heavy, and God's trying to set you down for just a minute, for just a moment, and to teach you something through it. You've been waiting on an answer. You've been waiting on a phone call. You've been waiting on something. It's not all for loss, friend. Have you considered what God is trying to teach you, what God is trying to give you until He gives you that green light? Until He gives you an answer? What is the Lord trying to speak to your heart regarding this red light? He's saying, hang on just a moment. Learn to depend on me. Call unto me. And friend, maybe tonight you need some spiritual perspective, you need some clarity, whatever that that need is, friend, consider the fact that maybe God's slowing you down for just a moment to try to teach you something, try to help you, try to protect you, to better prepare you. Would you go to the Lord and ask God to help you with that? Folks are down here at the altar praying. And friend, you know what? Oftentimes we get in such a hurry. Church, listen to me. I, I know you're tired. I know you may not feel the best. I know you've been working hard all week. We have too. We've been there. I understand. But you know what? Sometimes we just need to pause for a second. Sometimes we need to just slow down at that red light. And say, God, what is it that you want from me? Lord, what would you have me to do? God, what's missing in my life? What do I need to make right? What do I need to clean up in my own life? You do realize that invitation is a perfect time to consider those things. I've always tried our best when it came to invitation to not be in a hurry. I don't mean that, friend. I, I would never be the kind of preacher that would just want to keep you here and just delay it. That's not my heart. My heart is to pause for a moment and consider what thus saith the Lord. That's all, we, that's all we desire for you. Invitation time is a moment to pause and say, Lord, what do you want me to do? That doesn't matter what I want. doesn't matter what anybody else wants at this moment. What does God want? What does the Lord want? All right, church. Thank you so much for your faithfulness. Please remember our teen car wash. That's going to be at Valley Freeze from 11 o'clock to 2 o'clock this coming Saturday. And then, of course, our teen taco day is going to be here at the church immediately following Sunday morning service. And if you'll come over to the Family Life Center, we'll be happy to serve you in the best way we can. Uh, there is menus printed up in our bulletins, and there will, of course, be more menus uh, Sunday. But we would love for you to come out and be a part of it and pre- uh, support our young people. Thank you so much. Uh, all hearts and minds at ease this evening? All right. Hope you've done what the Lord wanted you to do. Okay. Brother David, we're so glad you're able to come tonight, brother, and we have been praying for you. Would you mind to dismiss us in a word of prayer, please?